purify my heart May every word, every thought, every motive, every intention Be pleasing in your sight, O oh God For your voice refreshes my soul Brings joy to my heart and light to my eyes your words more precious than gold, sweeter than honey, bringing me life. Purify my heart, be every word, every thought, every motive, every intention. Be pleasing in your sight, O oh God. For your voice refreshes my soul. Brings joy to my heart and light to my eyes. Your words more precious than gold, sweeter than honey, bringing me life. And purify my heart, be every word, every thought, every motive, every intention. Be pleasing in your sight, O oh God. Those words are inspired by Psalm 19. Psalm 19. And I chose them as we invoke an open sacred space, but I also want to acknowledge the land that we're on. This is Kanuga, it's a Cherokee name. This is colonized but Cherokee land and I want to remember that as we step into prayer but also to send healing and blessing to the ancestors and all Cherokee people yeah welcome lovely two people <laughs> just because there's two of you doesn't mean you have to stay for the whole time Everybody else comes and goes. Please make yourself comfortable. I chose a bunch of songs because uh, I thought there would be a lot of people here that never met me before. Uh, I'm wrong about that. <laughs> what? Do you think they want to hear the talk? I don't think they came. I think they're settling in and unpacking their suitcases. <laughs> I think they don't know what Birdsong Vespers is. There's a, a group that's just arrived at Kaduka. But they all, they're um, all the old Kanuga family, so they're probably really hugging each other and having fun. There's some playing tennis over there. So I chose songs that I thought would be a gentle introduction to what I do. Um, but Craig, you kind of you, you kind of know me. Yeah. <laughs> and Lyndon, you're married to me, so. You can scratch <laughs> so you those and do all those tomorrow. But I thought, well, I'm not doing bird song tomorrow. Um, but I'm gonna plow ahead anyway. This is, um, I like this song a lot. It's by T. R. Ritchie, and sometimes my more contemplative life now, I, I get really shaken in that by the state of the world, and um, I have to <laughs> remind myself that what I do is part of the healing, is part of the work, as well as doing social justice work. But I used to only be Martha. I used to just be the social justice hands. And this song helps me remember to be more balanced. And the, the contemplative part of me is just as needed now with the state of the world. People say to me, Oh, you've got to be crazy. How can you sing in times like these? Don't you read the news? Don't you know the score? How can you sing when so many others grieve? And people say to me, What kind of fool believes that a song could make a difference in the end? By way of reply, I say a fool such as I. I see a song as somewhere to begin 
A song is somewhere to begin The search for something worth believing in And if changes are to come There are things that must be done And a song is somewhere to begin and People say to me Oh, you've got to be crazy How can you love in times like these Don't you read the news Don't you know the score How can you love When so many others grieve And people say to me What kind of fool believes That love will make a difference In the end and By way of reply I say a fool such as I I see love as the right place to begin Love is somewhere to begin The search for something worth believing in And if changes are to come There are things that must be done And love is the right place to begin You know, neither of you got your phones open, so you're not following the order, so just say if you're like, I want to sing this song. Do you ever do, like, a commentary on your songs? Like, if we have questions about, like, the meaning or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. To start the song, something I kind of noticed was, like, it seems like you said you kind of struggled with, like, being con contemplative and also, like, doing, like, action, like, social justice work. Yes. And I definitely feel that way, too. Yeah. And something I kind of wonder is like the idea of like unceasing prayer. Yes, unceasing prayer. Yeah. 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 And uh, that's something I've been kind of wrapping my head around. Is like, how do you yeah. perform, you know, prayer at all? all the time? Which is what the instruction is. <laughs> so Drake's asking, how do you balance justice and peace with contemplat contemplation? I'm wearing the microphone and you're not, right? So this is what I'm telling these guys. Um, how do you balance that, and how do you do? How do you pray at all time, which is the instruction? All right, so my big teacher on this is a monk called Thomas Burton, who was possibly murdered in the 1960s because he spoke out against the Vietnam War. And, and pretty much he said it is impossible to pray in traditional prayer. But if you think of every action that we do is infused by love or selfishness or anger or compassion, if you think about the prayer in the things that you're doing, whether you're doing youth work or washing the dishes or singing a song, then it is possible to pray at all times. And the commitment, he said, the key commitment is to remind yourself to pray. Every time you wander off, which you will, a million, I do, a million times a day, oh, that's a nice piece of musical equipment, or, or, or what does this person think, or, you know, like, all the things, oh, I need to do the laundry, right? The key in unceasing prayer is, is the return, it's the return, um, because if you just willfully force yourself, you're not actually praying. Another name for that is mindfulness practice. Mindfulness yeah, practice. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's really important that we're human and that we live our lives and that we have a, a much broader concept of what prayer is. Yeah, thanks for asking that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually one of the things I'm going to talk about in my upcoming retreat next week. So after we've done it, ask me again and I uh, <laughs> might have some more wisdom from the group. And one of the things that I would say is that when you're struggling or when the world is struggling, the urgent, the need to pour out compassion or heart breaks. And that is actually, I think the heart is the organ of prayer, not the mind. Um, and it actually comes more naturally and more fervently when circumstances are wrong. Or after a long time of things been wrong, when they become right, then you like pray as well because you know, whereas if you just had a lot of privilege and everything's been handed to you on a plate, you just consume. Or maybe that was my own experience. We're going to sing a little bit of Latin. It's a round, but don't, I don't think you should attempt a round with three people. 
especially I don't know that you're a singer. I don't think, do you sing? <laughs> so with two people. This means give peace to every heart. Da pacem cardium. In Latin. Da pacem cardium. Da pacem. Da pacem. Da pacem cardium. Da pacem cardium. Da pacem. Da pacem. Da pacem cardium. Da pacem cardium. Da pacem. Da pacem. Da pacem cardium. Da pacem cardium. Da pacem. Da pacem. Da pacem cardium. Da pacem cardium. Da pacem. Da pacem. As I was singing, Trick, I was thinking about your question. And one of the great ways that I pray more often is by singing, right? And that, I think that's the same with people reciting mantras or doing walking meditation or um, you get people that knit prayer shawls. And like if you think about the Tibetan monks spending days making those mandalas that they then immediately, they, they, yeah, there is something about if you're consciously creating um, with a sacred purpose, it really, really helps hold your focus. And I think gathering together with other people, one of the things that went out the window for me when I left the Abbey was a daily prayer routine because it was corporate. We would, you'd show up for the other people and you'd show up because the bell rang. Um, to sustain that on your own, unless you're one of those very routine people, it's extremely difficult. I, I sustained it for a year, only one service. I used to do three or two when I lived in the Abbey. But, and after a year, I, I couldn't even really do that. And then I just started singing in the shower. <laughs> and then I stopped singing in the shower. But, um, yeah, walking in nature helps me. So w w I don't know if you have things that you do. I mean, you're an exercise person, aren't you? Yeah. So yoga is an example that people do. But I think it could be running or it could be anything. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think uh, that's why I, I sometimes contemplate like, sh should I follow was how I use my physical body? Should I follow more of a strategic system like a yoga practice? Yep. Or because I have a lot of like um, past experience with like weight training, and yep. I find there's a lot of benefit in my mental state with that. Do I just stay with that and kind of pay my own way on those? Yeah. Or transition to yeah, I think the best way to find that out is by trying it. Mm -hmm. And. One of the things I learned in a seminary from when we were studying the Hindu tradition, which is really traditions, <laughs> but was that there's different types of people, and some people are very drawn to work, right, using their hands. I mean, this is unfortunately based around the caste system, but if you throw out that judgment and just look at it, there's different types of people that, that are praying different ways, and one of the ways was very intellectual. Um, and, uh, and involves lots of different types, but the yoga way where you're using physical stuff. Mine, the one that I love is, it's called the Bhakti path. And, you know, the Hare Krishnas. Yeah, yeah. They're an example, but so are the Sufis. Their example is very heart, devotional. You see God as a lover. Clearly God is not your lover. Sorry, darling. <laughs> you are amazing, and God is in you. <laughs> but this, the holy, I mean, some of my clients ask me that. They're like, why do you use all this beloved language for God? That's just so weird. It is weird. And for some people it works, and for other people it just turns them off. And for, uh, yeah, and some people it's very much about using your hand, working in a soup kitchen, or, or caring for people that are dying. It's a beautiful prayer. I love today that we're talking more than we're singing. This is one of my favorite songs. It's a very good threshold song. Know you are loved Just as you are Dream your sweet dreams Till your soul is released 
know you are loved Rest in peace Dream your sweet dreams Till your soul is released Beloved child My heart is yours Beloved child Go out and open doors with your love With your faith With your compassion With your grace Know you are loved Just as you are Dream your sweet dreams Till your soul is released Know you are loved Rest in peace Dream your sweet dreams Till your soul is released Beloved child You are the light of the world Beloved child Go out, spread light to the world Be strong, be kind, be brave Know that you're mine, know that you're divine Know that it's alright to be afraid And know you are loved Just as you are Dream your sweet dreams Till your soul is released Know you are loved Rest in peace Dream your sweet dreams Till your soul is released Know you are loved Just as you are Just as you are Just as you are Okay, we're going to go into a little three minutes of quiet and then come back.
still and know that I am peace. Be still and know that I am Be still and know that I am Be still and know that I Be still and know that I Be still and know that Be still and know that Be still and know Feels like silence is the call today, so I'm gonna sing the Magnificat. And then I think we'll close. Do you know what the Magnificat is? No, it's uh, when Miriam, when Mary said yes to the angel, shortly after that she says this prophecy when she says, yes, I will, I will be your servant, I will I say yes to you, God, right? And when the Holy Spirit came into her, she, she had this incredible prophecy about basically Christianity in a nutshell. Like the, the, the rich will be pulled off their thrones, the hungry shall be fed, the fed, the lowly shall be lifted up. And the, uh, the glory of, of your people, Israel, it's really, it's a very beautiful pro prophecy. And it, it's sung by nuns and monks and other people that do Vespers and this is called Birdsong Vespers it's the time of day that Magnificat is said so I like to include it in our Birdsong Vespers here just a little nod to the tradition I hope you like it birds My soul shall praise and magnify you, Lord. Yes, I have come. Yes, I will come. I hear your voice is calling out my name into my life, and you shall be born. All generations praise to hold with me The sacred heart My beating heart And my soul is placed into this fire of love Yes, it becomes God's will be done Closed, so stale and old And the rich cannot receive what they don't own This emptiness, the spaciousness All generations praise to hold with me The sacred heart 
my beating heart And my soul was placed into this fire of love Yes, it becomes God's will be done Spread out the feast, let those in hunger come For your face be shown, your love be known The humble hear your voice, with you they sing Magnificat, Magnificat all generations praise to hold with me The sacred heart, my beating heart And my soul was placed into this fire of love Yes, it becomes, God's will be done And reach out to touch the world that is to come Magnificat 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 The birds and Drake and Lyndon have inspired me to completely throw out the order and um, to go for a contemplative walk. Let's end with uh, inspired by somebody like uh, Tishnat Han or re very recently my friend Jeanette. She got us to imagine that our footsteps were kissing the earth, which I really loved. But um, I'm going to say caressing, caressing. So we're going to go on the contemplative trail here. And I'll take the little camera so the people on YouTube can come. And we'll just, if you want to, I'm going to do it. Uh, have a silent walk where we imagine that our footsteps really can bless the earth. Step of prayer, every breath a new beginning,
And man, thank you for being here.